On the 21st of August 2013, the ABC 730 reports Michael Bressenden shone a light on Australia's Great War history, a forgotten chapter, and one that is so intricately intertwined with the stories of the Armenian Genocide. Every April, Australians in their thousands make the pilgrimage to Gallipoli to commemorate the national mythology forged on the beaches of Anzac Cove. What few Australians realise is that the day coincides with another anniversary of an even more tragic episode in history. On the eve of what Australians call Anzac Day, Armenians around the world hold their own Day of Remembrance to mark the wholesale annihilation of Armenian Christians in the dying days of the Turkish Ottoman Empire. Australia has a strong historical memory of the Great War. Yet, rarely reflected upon is the inescapable narrative that recounts Australia's inevitable involvement with the first genocide of the 20th century, which saw the systematic murder of 1.5 million Armenians and over 1 million Greeks and Assyrians. The Australian Institute for Holocaust and Genocide Studies, under the leadership of late prominent genocide scholar Professor Colin Tatz, became dedicated to unveiling this common history in an effort to combat Turkish state denial, which has sought to influence Australian foreign policy on the undeniable reality of the Armenian Genocide. There is categorical evidence from scholarship around the world that what happened between 1915 and 1922 was a genocide of the Armenians, the Pontian Greeks and the Assyrian communities to the extent of roughly one half of their total population. Never in history has a nation state been so dedicated to the eradication of what they call a lie. While Professor Tatz bid an untimely farewell to the world in 2019, his pioneering efforts in genocide research inspired a generation of Australian scholars who continue to battle against the influences of the well-researched spin doctors of truth and, importantly, to document the intertwining of Australian and Armenian history. Anzac prisoners of war, some of whom remained behind after the end of the Gallipoli campaign, were eyewitnesses of the atrocities being committed against the Armenian, Assyrian and Greek peoples during the genocide, recording hidden notes on the scraps of paper about the death marches that travelled through the deserts of modern Iraq and Syria. Surviving Anzac prisoners of war later reported to the Australian army of the killing fields and the cattle trucks filled with the bodies of Armenian men, women and children. Living in the churches, the homes, the monasteries, the community places of the deported indigenous peoples of Anatolia, the Armenians, the Greeks and the Assyrians, the Anzac and their fellow prisoners of war witnessed, heard about what was happening to these people, to these fellow Christians, and a number of them when they returned became very important players or very important informants for the humanitarian relief effort that we are to hear about so much later on. The story of Harold Earl Australian by L.H. Luscombe, who was captured in 1915 uh, in the hills above Anzac Cove on Gallipoli. Towards midday, we stopped at the rail junction town of Eshki Sehir, or Dorileo, where we were provided with our first meal for the day. At this station, we witnessed a sad and depressing sight. On the opposite side of the platform, another train was standing. It was composed of a number of empty two-tier steel sheep trucks. On the platform, a considerable number of Armenian women and children were huddled together. As our train pulled into the platform, Turkish soldiers armed with whips were driving the women and children into the sheep trucks. It was evidently intended to transport them to some distant concentration camp. All the Armenian men that could be were rounded up or liquidated. Some escaped to the mountains and lived there as brigands. The women and children were driven into concentration camps. A guy called George Kerr 
This is a um, diary entry from the 21st of January 1916. Underneath us on the floor of the room were huddled in all kinds of rags about 60 miserable creatures who we afterwards discovered were Greeks and Armenians employed on the tunnel. The tunnel he was referring to was the um, Taurus Mountains Railway. They were crouched about the fires made in old mesh di mess dishes and in that dull light looked at the lowest human beings I had ever set eyes upon. Underneath the poor brutes were gathered round their fires, which gave forth horrible smoke and poisoned the air with their fumes. Some of the Turks on the opposite side objected to this and made one party put out its fire. It was only a matter of time that the news of these war crimes would reach Australian shores from the written words of Anzacs and the notepads of war correspondents. As press coverage reached the Australian people, reporting race-based exterminations and persecutions, the pain and suffering of the Armenians and other Christian minorities of the Ottoman Empire caused great dismay throughout the country. One of Australia's most significant war correspondents of the time, Charles Bean, wrote, Turks, as the world knows, are at the present moment engaged in an endeavour to wipe out the Armenian nation. Bean and his colleagues left an invaluable mark on Australia's historical recollection of World War I, the Gallipoli campaign and the construction of Australia's post-war identity. Their thorough documentation significantly included the systematic persecution of the Armenians. Together with the Anzac testimonies, Bean's writings enhanced the stories of Australia's awareness of the indigenous Armenian, Assyrian and Greek struggle and the intersection between these nations. Their words produced acts of generosity from an unfamiliar people and friendships which have transcended time and space. The feeling of great loss and suffering, as told by the press and Anzac POWs, gave rise to the creation of government-endorsed humanitarian responses to the Armenian Genocide, which first emerged in Victoria in late 1915. The Armenian Relief Fund was established in Australia in December 1915 with the purpose of providing aid to the survivors of the Armenian Genocide. The first major grassroots drive of the fund was made in March 1917, when the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, together with other prominent Victorians and church leaders, agreed to set apart a Sunday in April for special collections on behalf of the Armenians. The appeal was a great success, and Melbourne newspapers reported that over £2,000 had been collected as a result. The Victorian State War Council recognised the Armenian Relief Fund as a patriotic fund, that is, one considered as having been formed for the purpose of supporting Australia's allies as well as its own soldiers. By 1918, Armenian relief committees were also formed in Sydney and Adelaide. Vikan Babkenyan, together with the former principal historian at the Australian War Memorial, Professor Peter Stanley, wrote Armenia, Australia and the Great War which contains many examples of the life-saving generosity of Australians in aid of Indigenous Armenian, Assyrian and Greeks. Australians were at the forefront in providing relief to Armenian genocide survivors. An exemplary Australian humanitarian was Red Cross nurse Isabel Hutton, who had accompanied the Anzac Light Horsemen in the Middle East during the First World War. She later joined the American Red Cross and helped provide relief to the tens of thousands of destitute Armenian refugees in Aleppo, Syria. The desperate plight of the Armenians intensified the mobilisation of humanitarian activism back home in Australia during the interwar period. In 1920, a movie called The Auction of Souls was shown throughout Australia. Based on the true story of an Armenian girl who had survived the Armenian Genocide, it premiered at the Sydney Town Hall on the 11th of January 1920 to a sell-out crowd. The New South Wales Minister of Education, Mr James, gave an introductory remark about the importance of the movie in providing awareness to Australians of the suffering of the Armenian people and why they should help them. The Auction of Souls is regarded by film historians today as being the first movie ever made explicitly as a work of advocacy for humanitarian relief. By 1922, every Australian state had an Armenian Relief Committee 
with regional and sub-branches. The relief movement culminated in the establishment of an Australian-run orphanage for some 1,700 Armenian orphans in Beirut, Lebanon. It was directed by Anzac veteran Captain John Knudsen and his wife Lydia. The Prime Minister of Australia, William Billy Hughes, promised free freight to the orphanage aboard the Commonwealth line of steamers for the goods collected by the Armenian Relief Committees. Within a short time, over $100,000 about 1.5 million in today's terms, worth of relief, supplies, was collected and shipped to the Armenian, Greek and Assyrian genocide survivors from Australia. Dr. Alexander Lieper, Professor of Classics at the University of Melbourne and a member of the Armenian Relief Fund, regarded it as a privilege for Australia, the youngest of nations, to have had the opportunity to save and restore members of one of the oldest of nations. The Armenian Relief Movement had mobilised a broad spectrum of Australia's religious, civic and political leaders, with many civilians also at the forefront in providing relief to the survivors of the Armenian Genocide, who found refuge in Greece, Syria, Lebanon and Armenia. These relief committees continued their work until the early 1930s and as a result of their commendable efforts, a significant number of Armenians, Assyrians and Greeks were saved from death and destitution. In Australia, this landmark response was an early manifestation of the humanitarian ethos that formed part of the nation's engagement with international movements in the interwar period. It is also considered to be Australia's first major international humanitarian relief effort. Thanks to the work of Tats, Diamatis, Stanley, Bob Kenyon and their colleagues, and through the relentless efforts of the Armenian National Committee of Australia, dozens of political leaders have now stood in federal parliament to tell the forgotten chapter in Australia's history, slowly freeing the country from the shackles of threats from denialist dictatorships who hope to bury these stories among with the official use of the term genocide by Canberra. Australia's first major humanitarian effort can be traced back to the 25th of April 1915, when Australian soldiers responded to calls from persecuted survivors of the Armenian Genocide. We acknowledge our first humanitarian effort as a country. I'm proud to recall our state's involvement in the relief efforts for the Armenian people. Obtain recognition and reparation for the plight of the world's Armenian peoples. Remembering the victims of the Armenian Genocide and those Australians who came to their aid. The work and efforts of those Australians who responded to the plight of the Armenian people. The humanitarian effort with the Armenians, though, was Australia's first. It's particularly important to recognise the humanitarian efforts of Australians. The marching of Armenians to their death started a mobilisation of Australians for their lives. Our diggers were amongst the first witnesses to describe the Armenian Genocide, which became our nation's first major international humanitarian relief effort. Memories of Australian soldiers who witnessed terrible atrocities during the First World War. We have witnessed the atrocity of the Armenian Genocide. Australian Flying Corps Captain Thomas White, who was captured in central Mesopotamia, wrote in his memoir that Armenians had sold their lives dearly. This relief fund of Australia provided humanitarian assistance to victims of the Armenian Genocide. Many Australian soldiers witnessed the tragic events of the Armenian race, suffered at the hands of the Ottomans. So to commemorate and recognise this almost 100 years after the genocide. Public opinion has also shifted, with a growing sentiment in Australia to lift Turkey's attempts to silence truth from being spoken. Members of Australia's Armenian community have rallied in Sydney, calling for the Australian government to officially recognise the mass killings of Armenians during the First World War as genocide. Hundreds of protesters have marched through the city, calling on the government to recognise the Armenian genocide. Members of Australia's Armenian community have rallied in Sydney, calling for the Australian government to recognise the mass killing of Armenians during World War I as genocide. Members 
members of the Armenian community have marched in central Sydney renewing calls for the federal government to recognise the killing of more than one million Armenians during World War I as genocide. 24th of April is the anniversary of what's known as the Armenian Genocide. 104 years ago on the eve of World War I, there were two million Armenians in the declining Ottoman Empire. By 1922, there were fewer than 400,000. The others, about one and a half million, were killed in what's historically termed the Armenian Genocide. Because on April 24, 1915, the Turkish government arrested and executed several hundred Armenian intellectuals. As time goes on and epochs change, so does the representation of history. The intertwined narratives of the Australians and Armenians at the Dardanelles and across the Middle East must not be forgotten, nor should its impact in contributing to the survival of the Armenian people be discounted.